Good morning and welcome everyone. The beginning of another new week and uh, we get to start it with the book of Acts. Let's pray and uh, let's proceed. We'll pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, the journey in the book of Acts thus far. Lord, as we study from Acts 10 today, we pray that you will help us grasp insights and truth, Lord, that will help us uh, live for you, Lord, the way you want us to. So, Father, we commit this entire time into your hands, Lord. Speak to each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Acts 10. We've uh, begun with it, the last class, and we saw that there is a divine orchestration of God here. Earlier in Acts 9, it was a time of persecution. Uh, Apostle Paul was moving towards Damascus to persecute the believers, but he has an encounter, and then God orchestrates a divine appointment with Ananias. And Ananias, a believer, comes, ministers healing, as well as uh, you know, prays for the baptism in the Holy Spirit, and uh, you know, he he sort of uh, meets with Paul based on what God's Spirit had spoken to him. Following this, we see Paul's journey. So we said that three years he was in the area of uh, Arabia and Damascus. And then later on, he goes to Jerusalem for 15 days. Uh, and then again, he is mostly in the regions of uh, Cilicia and Tarsus. Then we have a section in Acts 9 where it's mostly about the ministry of uh, Peter. So who are the pe people that uh, Peter ministered to? Acts 9. And what are the miracles that took place? Which one? I can't hear you. There was a there were two notable miracles. So what were they? Okay. Huh? Uh, Aeneas was healed. He was paralyzed for eight years, right? Eight years he was uh, paralyzed. Then here on the chat, Sister Chaya says, dead women alive. Yeah, dead woman. There was a woman by the name of Dorcas. You remember? So he gets news of this dead person and he has to go there and minister to this dead girl and she comes back to life. So dead woman. Uh, so there's the resurrection. There's a healing of the paralyzed and resurrection of the dead. So quite powerful. So this is what Peter has just experienced. And where is he staying? Which place is he staying? Yes, so we were talking about uh, his ministry in this place called Lydda and Jopa. In Lydda, there was the healing of a paralyzed person called Aeneas, and in Joppa, there was a resurrection of Dorcas. After this, Peter went and stayed somewhere. So which place was that? You can look it up in the... Somebody's home. Just tell me the name of that person. He stayed so Cornelius comes later. Where did he have his vision? Simon the Tanner. Yes, yes. Thank you. Both the Ninas <laughs> at the same time. Thank you so much. Simon the Tanner. And what is so special about Simon the Tanner? Simon the Tanner is, um, uh, you know, he, he was a Gentile. 
and uh, by this point peter's heart was such that he was kind of open to ministering to the gentiles you know, jews those days they did not want to have anything to do with the gentiles so we see an openness of heart and tanner is also uh, 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 a profession you know, all of you would know they deal with uh, leather and animal skin and carcasses so it was not a great place for him to choose as uh, a lodge uh, but he chose so some change of heart is happening in peter he's open to people and different communities so that is something we can observe so he's staying at the place of simon the tanner then what happens another divine orchestration the way god orchestrated between paul and ananias one more is happening what is that yeah now in caesarea there is cornelius who is a, a centurion so influential man what happens to him what does he see okay uh, okay ninth hour you can see he was uh, praying and uh, he sees a vision in which an angel of the lord comes and speaks to him how does it address him yes so god has been um observing him and what was what was uh, uh, his gesture of devotion giving arms he was a devout man he used to give to the lord and so uh, the angel comes up to him and says see it has come to come to the lord as a memorial so where our giving is also not in vain see how god keeps an account of everything so cornelius is giving was a memorial before the lord and then he gives him an instruction what is that yes yes yeah send somebody to bring simon peter from simon tanner's house that's the instruction he gets so how many people does he send three correct so devout soldier and one two um, servants so three of them go now in the meantime what's happening correct so peter was hungry and uh, you know he was on the house top and but it was a time of prayer so he was praying and then what happens he has a vision what does he see in the vision yeah all kinds of animals birds and what is the instruction that he got okay kill and eat what is his uh, rise peter kill and eat what is his response i have no i have never eaten anything common or unclean all right so then um, what is the response that god gives him right verse 15 what god has cleansed you must not call common and how many times did he hear this three times and the object was taken away did he understand the vision when when did he understand ha huh. okay not really not really because uh, verse 17 says that he wondered within himself what this vision meant okay but by that time the men had come and then he hears another prompting from the holy spirit behold three men are seeking you in verse 19 arise therefore go down and go with them doubting nothing for i have sent them so see how god is communicating one trance happened earlier vision angel is coming in the vision right now a prompting of the lord in his spirit where 
uh, God is telling him to go forth right with these three men even at that point Peter probably did not fully understand so is it possible in our lives we see a vision or a dream and we don't understand what it is sometimes it, it is possible but just because we did not understand we must not stop obeying God look at Peter next instruction he's still obeying okay so God may have his way of revealing what it means to us so up until that time we continue to do what God wants us to do all right so now Peter has come he has come with those three people and uh, what is going to happen that's what we will look at so we are at verse 24 and we will uh, study from there so the following day they entered Caesarea now Cornelius was waiting for them and he had called together his relatives and close friends by now we don't know if Cornelius gathered more information about Simon uh, and felt that the blessing that he is going to receive should not be only for him. It should be for all his people. So look at him. Seems like a very generous man in his giving as well as uh, in, in the way he relates to his loved ones. He's called his relatives and close friends. It's like a life group now. Everyone's come and they're all waiting in Cornelius' house. And Peter comes in. And as soon as Peter comes in, uh, they fall he falls at the feet and worships. Have we seen this before? Have we seen people uh, honoring the apostles earlier? Peter. Till now, Paul's ministry has not yet started. So, till accident, we are still talking about Peter and the other apostles. Do you remember Acts 3? When the beggar looks at the beggar looks at Peter, uh, Peter says, Look at me. Right. Later on, once the, the healing, the miracle has taken place, and people are looking at Peter and John, Peter says, Why do you look at us? It's not us. As if we have done the miracle. So they don't take credit for what God does. So the work of God is something that we must glorify God for. Uh, and same attitude Peter is carrying here. Cornelius' house, he comes. Cornelius falls on the feet of Peter. Verse 26. But Peter lifted him up saying, stand up. I myself am also a man. So they're not taking the credit that belongs to God. How does this help us today? How does this help us today? We don't draw attention to ourselves. I mean, we True. always uh, focus on glorifying God, no matter, True. even if it's a miracle True. or anything of that thing. Yeah. Very, very good. Thank you, Nina. So um, whatever is happening, the Lord receives the glory for it. And the apostles were careful to give God the glory at all times. So even now, when Cornelius is trying to worship Peter, he resists that and uh, he says, I'm a man just like you. Let's continue from there. So people are gathered and that's what Peter notices, not just Cornelius, but the others are also there with him. Uh, and uh, now look at verse 28. This is important. Verse 28 and 29. Can somebody read it aloud, please? Then he said to them, You know how unlawful it is for a Jews meant to keep command, keep company with or go to one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. 
therefore i came without objection as soon as i was set saint for i asked them for what reason have you saint for me okay so see here is the answer we were saying that the vision was such that peter didn't understand at the first go but sri radha is right he seems to have understood it before he went with the uh, two men who were waiting for him three men right so here he is giving the interpretation of the vision what is the interpretation of the vision yes so don't call anyone unclean we we must treat everyone equal so that's what he says uh but god has shown me that i should not call any man common or unclean so it's really powerful uh because the book of acts it's it's like right from the start acts 18 where we hear that the holy spirit is going to be poured out on the believers and they will preach the gospel in jerusalem judea samaria at that time samaria was also a mixed breed but god tells them you're going to go to different communities and did they go to samaria till now have we seen samaria anywhere in acts very good philip which which chapter is it is it 5 acts 8 oh sorry okay so that's where we have seen samaria so jerusalem judea samaria and to the ends of the earth even in terms of missions you remember we mentioned earlier that uh, there are the hellenists the greek speaking jews cross cultural missions then you have missions to other communities starting with samaria now again cornelius is you know cornelius is gentile we saw uh, simon the tanner being gentile peter is outright going there and doing the ministry to the gentiles this is missions he's going out to another community so that is the understanding that god has given peter let's move on now he starts to preach jesus look at verse 35 or we can read 34 and 35 very beautiful verses it says then peter opened his mouth and said in truth i perceive that god shows no partiality you see god has created all of us equal he has created man and woman in his own image and so he does not show any partiality to a particular group of people verse 35 but in every nation whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him isn't that wonderful no wonder we can have people from different nations worshiping with us and it's still the same because for god he does not discriminate between people so verse 35 very wonderful but in every nation whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him that's the way god looks at people and that's the way worship can be and should be so from this point on he's going to preach the lord jesus christ and he talks about how there is forgiveness uh, through jesus and this is not just for the jews but it is for everyone and then he talks about the ministry of jesus we of, often repeat verse 38 over there uh, acts 10 38 very common you must have heard this scripture it says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with holy spirit and with power who went about doing good healing all who were oppressed by the devil for god was with him so it shows us about the supernatural ministry of jesus how he uh, had the holy spirit power in his life how do we know that he had the holy spirit power he did miracles but what does that verse say 
That particular verse, 38. Anointed. What is anointing? Presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, presence and power of the Holy Spirit. That is how he was able to do these supernatural works. Okay, And uh, yes, the results are obviously there. But how did it happen? Because of the anointing. So how did Jesus minister? He was anointed. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Spirit and with power. So what do we need to do the ministry? Anointing of God. Anointing of the Holy Spirit with power. Then what will we be able to do? Doing all the good that he did and bringing healing to those who are oppressed of the devil. And God was with him. There's another passage in Hebrews. It says that, uh, you know, God uh, affirmed or God confirmed the ministry of Jesus with, with uh, the supernatural, with miracles, signs, wonders. So when God is with us, these things happen. God was with Jesus. And his ministry was fruitful. So this is our prayer also. We say, Lord, anoint me with the Holy Spirit and with power that I may go about just like Jesus, doing good and healing all those who are oppressed of the devil and be with me. This is a prayer that we can pray. And as we serve the Lord, we are going to see him work. And this is how you know, Jesus ministered. So what is Peter doing right now? He's preaching about Jesus. And he talks about the uh, uh, what Jesus did for us on the cross and uh, how he did his ministry and how he died and rose again. Uh, and, uh, you know, the fact that this is something that we must go ahead and proclaim to others. Verse 42 commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that this is this that this that it is he who was ordained by god to be judge of the living and the dead so basically he's speaking about jesus being the messiah so he's saying he's also the judge who will return now while the preaching is still going on okay something unusual happens Till now, how did the, uh, the apostles minister Holy Spirit baptism? What was the common way? Holy Spirit baptism. Now, if they wanted someone to receive, huh? that is the result. But minister, how? how? Laying on of hands. Very good. Laying on of hands. Look at what happens. Uh, in verse 44. So Peter is standing and he's preaching this long sermon about Jesus, right? And that we have to proclaim about Jesus. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. So what is the difference? Common way, laying on of hands. How did they get baptized in the Holy Spirit? Cornelius. Yes. While hearing the word. So without the laying on of hands, people were filled with the Holy Spirit. Is that possible? It can happen. So imagine, you know, we are ministering to a crowd of uh, hundreds and thousands of people. And we want to pray for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Obviously, there are thousands of people. You can't go and lay hands on 1,000 people. But as we pray for them, they can still be baptized in the Holy Spirit wherever they are standing. So that is what happened over here. Now, second question. Are Cornelius and his household baptized in water? No, not yet. No, not yet. They're just listening to the first sermon. 
they're not yet baptized in water. So a lot of people ask the question, what comes first, Holy Spirit baptism or water baptism? It can be whichever way. Some people, they're first baptized in water. Then they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. But here in Acts chapter 10, why is Acts chapter 10 important? One, because the gospel goes to the Gentiles. That is one. Second is, baptism in the Holy Spirit happened without laying on of hands. Third, baptism in the Holy Spirit happened before baptism in water. So this is the difference that happened in Acts chapter 10. So always remember, Cornelius and his household, these are some key points or important points to remember. So while Peter was still preaching, he didn't even, doesn't sound like he prayed for them. And yet the Holy Spirit was poured out. So it's possible. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. There were people with uh, Peter. Who are the people of circumcision? Jews. So when the Jews saw this, uh, they were amazed that the Holy, the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. What does this show us about God and God's uh, relationship with the Gentiles? There is no partiality. We already read that, verse 34. There's no partiality. He is happy to have people from all nations, whoever fears him, he's happy with them. And so the Jews were amazed that God is accepting the Gentiles. Isn't it a big thing? For Holy Spirit to fill the Gentiles. So they saw that with their own eyes and they thought, wow, God accepts the Gentiles. And what was the result? Now these people were filled with the Holy Spirit. What was the outcome? Usually what happens when people are filled? So they spoke in tongues and they magnified God. After looking at all this, Peter, uh, he asks in verse 47, Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So what is he saying? If Correct. Now is the water baptism. He says, God did not stop. He poured out his spirit on them. How can we stop them from being baptized in water now? We have to give them water baptism. So God very clearly showed the Jews that I accept the Gentiles, the believing Gentiles. Holy Spirit baptism took place. Then water baptism took place. Fine. So after that, he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. So finally, in Caesarea, there is ministry to the Gentiles and uh, they have accepted Christ. Now let's move on to Acts 11. But before we do that, I just wanted to check with us, uh, you know, what are your thoughts or any uh, learning so far from the book of Acts? We've done 10 chapters. Okay. So what is our learning? Anything specific that stands out for you? We've seen a lot. Many different people, incidents. And we said that uh, eight years, right? After the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, around eight years, roughly within a decade, all this is happening. Okay, so what is it that stands out for you, online and on campus students? Yeah, let's use the mic, please. And uh, online students as well, please unmute and uh, share. Yeah, uh, the first few chapters, the boldness of Peter and all the apostles was so fearful before the 
the Holy Spirit baptism and how they can do the ministry because of the power with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It yes. very, uh, it's, it's a call for each one of us. Yeah. So something different. Yeah. Like they were uh, timid, but after the baptism in the Holy Spirit, they are so very bold. Yes. Uh, online, please go ahead. So, uh, living, living in the power of the Holy Spirit and His anointing enables us to live a life of victory personally and also oppress the evil one victoriously and also help others. So, many people can share this good news because many people are not able to accept this good news. But when we live this gospel and we walk in victory, so yes. your only secret is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So that was so powerful in each and every, even today's lesson. So accepting everyone, that is possible only in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Our mindset changes. We accept True. everyone as God's, as God's children. See them in the light of his creation and his acceptance. That So that's uh, what yeah. I see. Yeah, sure, Jack. And thank you so much for sharing. So we are overcomers by the power of the Holy Spirit. We see that in the lives of many people. And uh, the way people are accepted by God, communities are accepted, you know, that is uh, wonderful. Anything else? Yeah, ma'am, we can see the power of God and like God can heal anyone anytime, ma'am. Yes. Uh, like yes. anyone anytime. And the way Peter speaks sometimes and people heal. Yes. So like, it's not Peter, it's God. So our God is sovereign. He has power and he can heal anyone, anytime. Yes, praise God. Yeah. So God is at work and we see his power doing supernatural things. Yeah, that's true. What else? Uh, there are some comments here. I'd appreciate it if you unmute and share, please, because you're hearing my voice all the time. For a change, I want to hear all your voices. So whatever you have typed, if you can just speak that out, that would be even better. Uh, can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, yes, Prince. Go ahead. So one thing I uh, like this, like, uh, we can't confide God to a box. Like, this is how God works. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and uh, his patterns of, you can't say, like, this is the way God works. Yes, yes. Baptism and then Holy Spirit baptism. It's not that way. He moves in a sovereign way, in a, what way he likes. Yes. And the other one is like he is always ready to pour out his spirit mm. and uh, mm. to move and transform lives. And uh, it's not God waiting; it's we who are waiting. Like we are, it's we who are delaying. It's not God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Prince, for sharing what uh, has touched you. Uh, Sri Radha, you were saying something. So, uh, like where God's anointing is more, the judgment will be more. Mm -hmm. Like we have to be very careful about the anointing. Yes. Like we can't take it very lightly. Mm -hmm. Like what we saw in Anana and Safaras. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So the greater uh, the glory of God, the more severe the judgment and quicker the judgment. So that's quite uh, uh, scary. <laughs> but we have to be careful. True. Uh, yes, Sister Chaya, are you able to unmute and share? Yes, Pastor. Pastor, uh, we saw in this uh, one man called Cornelius. He was a very good man. But yes. he needed Jesus. Jesus. So we, each one of us, however we are righteous or anything, but we need to know that who Jesus is and what he did for us, and we need to accept him. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. So this was a great thing for me. Yeah, thank you. That's another insight from uh, Acts 10. No matter how good we are, we need salvation through Jesus Christ. Without that, there's only one way to salvation, and that is through Jesus Christ. Thank you for sharing. Yes, Nikhil? Uh, so, my friends, <coughs> Chechi shared that uh, uh, Peter got boldness through the Holy Spirit. So we can see there, like so many times they got persecution, they got troubled. But even though they trust on God and they just went. So uh, we can see in their life, they just believe on God that if God called us to do, then we will go. He'll make the way whatever he wants to use to us. So okay. even though we can also 
uh, do like same if god called us to go no matter what the situation no matter what the trouble he will make the way and he will put whatever if he wants to do so he will do for us amen so we can see the pouring out holy spirit also holy spirit helping them to uh, do things yes and yes. Uh, to uh, make them out from their things like whatever mm. so, yeah yeah great thank you thank you nikhil yeah so uh, the boldness of uh, the believers uh, and the way they stepped out uh, god always provided for them uh, anyone else i see a few more people on the call so if you could also share please that would be helpful and then we will move forward uh we also can you hear me pastor yes 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 nina uh, we all also looked at the first martyr uh, -huh. uh stephen uh, because he had an uh, amazing life and testimony before that um i mean the importance that was given to the ministry of word and prayer i think we saw it in acts 2 and again uh, um even in six mm. they said we will not uh, do i mean the, but at the same time these things like distribution when there was something an administration problem it was not as yes. if they disregarded it they right. went about it and they chose men full of the holy spirit and wisdom which was a revelation in itself no matter what we do in the church we need the uh, pow power of the holy spirit the anointed power whatever the smaller we whatever we do we need that to be able to do and then we see how they go on to become a uh, wonderful servants of god both uh, stephen and philip who was also yes. one of a uh, part of them part of the yeah. seven that were chosen and then right. uh, saul the most unexpected person the persecutor of the church i mean if uh, you know god had a, yeah. such a special plan for him so there is really hope for almost anybody who even if who are uh, contrary who do not uh, look to the gospel or are against the gospel they can also be brought to the knowledge of jesus christ looking at uh, paul's amazing life and which yes. we will see in later days but that's what yes kind of yes yeah thank you thank you nina uh, if the others are able to share please do if not uh, we'll think of moving ahead all right so uh what i'm thinking is we'll stop right here and i request us to please read acts 11 and 12 and come for the next class okay uh because there's a lot that is going on and unless we recap review we will not remember anything so that's the reason i'm asking you questions now we're going to start from acts 11 please read acts 11 12 and come then it becomes easier for me also i'll try to summarize it uh, for us show us some maps uh, and uh, we can proceed fast so we'll stop right here for today uh, i want to request anyone from the online batch to lead us in prayer the closing prayer pastor shall i pray yes yes jacket father god thank you lord thank you father god father we praise you we worship you lord god thank you for this time that you've given us lord god to draw from your word lord god meditate on your precepts oh god father all that we have learned lord god from the acts of the apostles oh god father help us to live lord god the way you've called us to live father god by the power of the holy spirit obeying your word father god where you call us oh god help us to obey lord god to go to that place oh god help us to obey you in the daily routine of our lives oh god so that our lives are so evident to others oh god that you are with us and we glorify you father god write your word in our heart lord god remember lord help us to remind ourselves of the scriptures each time lord god so that we can live in the same victory lord god the power that came from jesus oh god father the power that you gave jesus oh god to do good oh god and all the peace that we have oh god is from you so that live this peace lord god so that others will know that we are your children lord god father we pray lord god that this will translate into our lives so oh god that we will live lord god the way that you want us to look help us oh god in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen man thank you thank you jack and god bless you god bless you all we'll meet uh, in the next class please read acts 11 12 and come thank you
bye for now okay nina says also the apostles were undeterred in the face of opposition and imprisonment yes praise god and they come continue to share god's word so that's something for us to learn thank you for sharing <clears throat>